Across the nation, 2022 was a record year for the number of people who died at the hands of law enforcement, whether shot, beaten, restrained, or tasered. That's according to a nonprofit research group called Mapping Police Violence, which tracks these fatal incidents. California, however, saw its lowest number of deaths since the group started tracking data in 2013, with 139 people killed by law enforcement across the state, though that was still the highest number among all the states, due in part to California being the most populous state. One of those people was 48-year-old Sharano Stingley. Now, we've been following closely this story for months now. Stingley died in the hospital days after going unconscious during an arrest by Sacramento County Sheriff's deputies. That was back in December. The sheriff's office says they were responding to a report of a man under someone's truck in a Sacramento County neighborhood. Stingley's family says he was having a mental health crisis and was searching for his daughter's home in that same neighborhood. At a memorial and march for Stingley yesterday, I asked family and supporters how they see his death fitting into a broader picture. And a warning, we do show some of the body camera video in this story. Tutu the general, that's who he is. On Sunday afternoon, dozens of people gathered at Florence Square to remember Sharano Stingley. I try not to cry today, but I just miss him. I miss his smile, I miss his bald head, I miss his ears, I miss his voice. Stingley's daughter, 20-year-old Diamond Stingley, remembers her dad as a man who loved his family, who had a megawatt smile and was the life of the party. Family and friends say he was taken too soon. It took a whole life that we never get back. They took my memory, they took my protector. I'm coming and I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna get justice. Come here, hands! Stingley became unconscious during an arrest on December 6th. The Sacramento County Sheriff's Office has released one angle of body camera video. It shows he initially complied with deputies, but then a struggle started. By the fourth minute, Stingley appeared to pass out. He was taken to the hospital where the coroner's office pronounced him dead 10 days later. Now Stingley's family has filed a federal civil rights lawsuit against Sacramento County and the Sheriff's Office. The Sheriff's Office tells us they have a long-standing policy of not commenting on pending litigation. Justice! On Sunday evening at a march organized by Black Lives Matter Sacramento, founder Tanya Faison talked about the number of people killed by law enforcement nationwide in 2022. A number mapping police violence says is close to 1,200, the highest it's been since the nonprofit started tracking these fatal incidents in 2013. More than one in 10 of those last year happened in California, including Stingley's death. We're experiencing a lot of death by law enforcement that's going unchecked and unnoticed and nobody's talking about it. <laughs> Stingley family friend Zakia Brazil, known as Miss Kiwi, oversees an after-school program for kids in Del Paso Heights, which is how she came to know Sharano Stingley, whose young son SJ was in her program. It's very hard. You want your babies not to, to live in fear. You know, you want them to wake up happy and strong and you want them to succeed in life. But then you have these moments where, you know, they're, you know, I had SJ tell me he, he has to look over his shoulder. The group marched east along Florin Road, calling for justice for Sharano Stingley. I just hate that he's no longer here and now his life ended like that. We're trying to lift his name today and make sure that the community here knows that we're going to continue to fight and remind people that he was killed and he was not armed and it was not justified and he should still be here with us today. Say his name! Sharano Stingley! They say they want the deputies involved in Stingley's arrest held accountable for his death. They are also calling for the release of more body camera video. The march closed down the intersection of Florin Road and Franklin Boulevard for a short time around 8 Sunday night. The demonstration ended without incident and family members say they'll continue pushing for answers.